Now in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to solve this by the Bernoulli substitution. I also have another video that shows you guys how to solve this by separating the variable, so you can check that out. And at the end, you can tell me which method you guys like more, alright? So, in order for us to use the Bernoulli substitution, be sure we remember the form, which is this right here, right? dy dx plus p of x times y, and then this is equal to q of x times y to the nth power. And be sure that you remember and in this case can be any real number. As we can see, this is what we have, and as long as we add a y on both sides, we can put this equation in this form, right? So let's go ahead and do that. We will have dy dx plus y, and this is equal to square root of y, which is the same as y to the one half power. And you see, this is what we have right here. And since n can be any real number, of course it will work for one half as well. Okay, when you look at this equation in this form, it seems like it's like a you know linear equation, right? However, this is not linear at the moment because we have y to the nth power, just like when we have y to the one half power, it's not linear right here. Well, Bernoulli's substitution says, as long as we pick another variable, as traditionally we let phi, and we are going to do the following, and you have to remember this really well, we let phi equals to y raised to the 1 minus n's power, and then we have to figure out what's dy dx in terms of dv dx and things like that. Once we perform the substitution, at the end, the result will be the usual linear equation that we know how to solve. So let's go ahead and do that. So in this case, the n is 1 half. I'm going to let phi equals to y raised to the 1 minus this, which is 1 half power. And then 1 minus 1 half, it's of course 1 half, so we have phi is equal to y to the 1 half power. And you see, phi is equal to y to the 1 half power, so of course we can say, we can just square both sides. That means we'll have y equals to phi squared, and then from here, it's easier for us to differentiate, right? So let's go ahead, you see, we look at this, we can differentiate both sides with respect to x. So we get dy dx, this is equal to, bring the 2 to the front, so the 2 and then minus 1, of course, so 2 phi. But since y is a function of x, phi is a function of y, so phi is also a function of x. We have to multiply this by d phi dx, like this. Alright, so this is what we need to plug into this equation and then do the substitution. First, dy dx, in this case, is 2 phi d phi dx, so let's plug that in right here, 2 phi d phi dx, and then we add it with the y, which in our case is the same as v squared, so let's put that as v squared, and this is equal to y to the 1 half, which we have it right here, it's the same as v. Okay, this is what we have now, and this is going to be linear, the usual linear that we know how to solve. And I'm just going to show you, in order for you to see a linear differential equation, we need to make this clean, right? d phi dx. So let's go ahead and divide everything by 2 phi. So let's go ahead and do that. And then you see this and that will be cancelled. And we will have d phi dx, and this is plus 1 half phi, and this is equal to 1 half. And now, this is the usual linear equation that we know how to solve. And we can just go ahead and find our integrating factor, which we have to look for this, right? So let's go ahead and say mu, it's the same as e raised to the integral power, and we put this inside with the 1 half, right? And then we have the dx. So the integral 1 half dx is just going to be 1 half x. So we'll have e to the 1 half x. And be sure you don't put a plus c, because this is just a linear, this is just a integrating factor. Um, we only put a plus c when we're solving a differential equation. So right here, let's go ahead and multiply everything by this, e to the 1 half x, like this. And then, let me just put on the work right here. This times that, we have e to the 1 half x dv dx, and then we add it with 1 half e to the 1 half x, and then we have the phi right next to it, and this is equal to 1 half times that, right? So 1 half e to the 1 half x. Okay, and the beauty of doing this is so that 
the left hand side is going to be the derivative of a product of two functions and it is going to be e to the one half x which is always going to be the mu right and then you multiply by phi the original phi so you see if you look at this and differentiate it we use the product rule we first keep the first function and you multiply by the derivative of phi which is dv dx and then we add it with we keep the second function and the derivative e to the one half x is exactly this one half and then e to the one half x so this is what we have and on the left hand, on the right hand side we have one half e to the one half x after this step we can go ahead integrate both sides and we are integrating with respect to x let's put that down right here so you see this and that will cancel right the integral and derivative so this is just what we have e to the one half x times v and we will have the integral of this is just going to be let me write down the function part first because e to the something this right here the derivative of one half x is just one half x right so let me just write down this right here let me also write down the constant just to show you guys the work this is pretty much repeating itself right so we have one half e to the one half x but the derivative of one half x is one half when we're doing the integral we have to divide it by that constant one half right which is the same as saying multiplied by two over one and then you see they cancel out okay so you can work that out in detail on your own but the integral of this is just e to the one half x and we need to finally put a plus c now <laughs> because we are solving the differential equation right here we put a plus c on the right hand side and then this is what we have this is just one by the way right so i want to get the v by itself so let's go ahead and divide everything by e to the one half x so let's do that so that they cancel and i'll also divide this by e to the one half x and I'll also divide this by e to the one half x so they also cancel off, right okay we will have v equals to one half x that this cancel already one half x over what e to the one half x over e to the one half x is just one and then we can write this as plus c e to the negative one half x let me just use negative exponent for that right well phi is what phi is the same as y to the one half power so we can say well, which is the same as square root of y right let me just put this down as square root of y which is equal to that one plus c e to the negative one half x and you see now this is actually the same as the result that we had earlier but i'll just finish this based on this right here the initial condition says when x is equal to zero y will be nine so let's plug in nine into the y right here now we have nine and we have to do the square root and then this is equal to one plus c e to the negative one half and then we multiply by zero for the x like this okay the left hand side we get three this is equal to one plus c times well zero times this is just zero e to the zero is just one so we have c three is equal to one plus c of course c is equal to two and we're pretty much done you see now we can just write this as square root of y equals to one plus c is two so put on two and then of this e to the one half x and that's negative one half x at the end we square both sides so finally we see y is equal to parentheses one plus two e to the negative one half x and then everything square same answer as what we got earlier and up to you which method that you like more than the other and that's it